Hi there, my name is Jackie Decker and I'm going to walk you through how you might help students understand distributive property more deeply using algebra tiles. You may want to begin by going back to multiplying with base 10 materials and there's a different video on that, uh, so go check that out. We do find that if students start with base 10 materials, they develop a deeper understanding of the distributive property with algebra tiles. When we begin with algebra tiles, we do want to reactivate that multiplication of number. So we might ask them to represent three multiplied by two using their algebra tiles. Students may or may not know what we mean when we ask them to represent multiplication this way. So we might need to give them some wait time, allow that productive struggle to happen. And we often see these two models first. Students will make two groups of three and three groups of two, getting them an answer of six in both situations. And we wanna name that as the commutative property for students. But we wanna move past the groups of model to a model that's gonna take us into grade nine and 10 math and beyond. So we're just going to give some hints maybe as needed, or we might just wait and ask students, what's another model? There's another way we can show this. And whether we nudge them to say, could you build a rectangle out of your tiles? Or whether we just wait, a student will eventually come up with this model, which we might have to show to other students. And then we're going to ask students, where do you see the two, the three, and the six in all three of these models? And after some quiet think time and some turn and talk, students will say, well, we see a width of two, a length of three, and we can see an area of six. And we want to connect the groups of model to the area model for students, so we might consolidate that thinking like this, showing where we see the two and the three and the six in each, seeing that area of a rectangle is length times width and connecting that clearly for students and also showing that it could be length times width or width times length using that commutative property that students discovered or reactivated their knowledge of. Now that we know it, we're going to throw that up on an anchor chart for students to refer to. We're going to do some more practice. We might ask them to do two multiplied by four. And now we can say, I want to see this three different ways. After some quiet think time and productive struggle, Students are going to produce something like this. We can consolidate using student work, connecting it back to the problem we just did. After we observe that all of our students can build and understand all three models, we're going to decide how much more practice our students need multiplying numbers using the area model. And when we think everyone's ready, we're going to move on to a problem like this. What is 3 multiplied by 2x? And we'll see that students start with three groups of 2x. And we might, again, need some quiet wait time, some quiet think time, and we might have to give a nudge to students. Could we make a rectangle out of these tiles? And students will build a rectangle like this, and then we're going to ask them, what is the length and the width and the area of your rectangle? Students usually can recognize that the area is 6x because we use 6x tiles to build it. Understanding the length and the width might take some more practice, but students will tell us that we have a width of 3 and a length of 1x, 2x's. We want to make this really clear for students that that length is 2x, and we want to connect that back to our understanding of area being length times width. And we're going to put that on an anchor chart for students, and we want to make it really clear here that our width is 1, 2, 3 small jumps, and our length is 1x, 2x's, 2 large jumps. And we want to make that really, really clear for our students. Then we're going to need lots more practice. When we ask them to do 2 multiplied by 4x, this is a chance for us to see some misconceptions and some understandings and perhaps some emerging understandings. Many students will build a rectangle like this. We can clearly see two groups of 4x, but students have put it into a rectangle that has a width of 4 and a length of 2x. You'll remember we were looking for a width of 2 and a length of 4x. And so by putting up a mistake, we're showing students that we believe that mistakes have things to teach us, that mistakes are valuable. And after looking at that together, we're going to ask students to build a rectangle that more closely represents the problem. And after some quiet think time, students will move their tiles and they'll make this rectangle. They might be uncomfortable with a long, skinny rectangle, but they will build their understanding of what the width and the length of those rectangles actually mean. We might want to go backwards now. So we might give an area to students and ask them to build a rectangle and find out what the length and width are. An open problem like 12x is great because we're going to see lots of correct answers here. 
Some students are going to use the factors of three and four to build these two rectangles with a length of three X and a width of four, and then a three by four X. They're also going to connect that to area. We might see two and six in two different ways, six by two X and two by six X. And we might see the factors of one and 12 like this. This encourages students to build rectangles of all different shapes as they're looking for the best one. Now we're ready to add in both a variable and a constant term. And we're gonna ask students to now build a rectangle out of these. Students can easily grab their six X plus three and they recognize that has to be the area of the rectangle, but there's gonna be some productive struggle here making a rectangle, give students time, and they will eventually come to a rectangle that looks like this. This is another chance for us to practice finding the width of three and the length of two X plus one. Writing that as an expression for area is going to help us build understanding what that width and length means. Students might need a bit more practice going from the area to the length and width. So eight X plus four gives us a chance to find more than one correct rectangle. Students might build both of these and we might want to encourage them to start recording both the length, the width, and the area of those to start understanding how to measure those and what they mean. And when they've done lots of practice going from the area to the length and the width, now we're ready to go in the other direction. We're gonna give students a very typical problem like this, and we're wanting them to understand that the width is gonna be two, the length is gonna be three X plus one, and it's gonna take some time and productive struggle, and students will start to think, well, what does a rectangle look like that has a length of three X plus one and a width of two? And eventually our students will get here. We will ask them what the area of that rectangle is. And again, we're gonna to wanna to connect the concrete and the visual to the algebraic. And then students just need lots of practice going back and forth in both directions. Our students are now ready for a good challenge. We're gonna ask them to multiply a monomial by a binomial and see what they can do. Again, we're hoping our students are gonna look at this problem and think about X being their width and two X plus one being their length. We're hoping they're gonna visualize that. And they're thinking, what kind of a rectangle can I build that looks like this with these dimensions? And after some wait time and some productive struggle, some collaboration, students will build us a rectangle that looks like this. And when we ask them what the area is, they're gonna be able to count those tiles and let us know. And again, we're gonna help them make those connections between the concrete and the visual and the algebraic because that's where the deep learning really happens. And now we're just gonna ask our students to go back and forth between area and width and length to really understand the different forms of those equations and what they mean. Thanks so much for listening.